I think a lot of the weather nerds sort of unite around these big catastrophic events. Yeah. But when it's this big, it tends to take over at most folks' news feed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yesterday people were watching it. Everyone saw the satellite data that perfectly defined eye. I think it, it's rather ominous mm -hmm. for most folks here to look at something like that. That eye is about uh, five to seven miles wide. Mm -hmm. The hurricane force winds extend out 30 miles either side. So you look at around a 70 mile diameter of winds at around 185 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, so think about the biggest, baddest, most awful tornado in the world and it's 70 miles wide. Mm. And it doesn't move as fast as a tornado. You get the front side and the back side as it mm. comes through. Um, I, I realize this is uh, the video from the, uh, uh, the Hurricane Hunters. Yeah. In, two, in the past two days, two Hurricane Hunter aircraft have actually had to turn around. Now, these are specially reinforced Orion P3s. These are, these are the cat's pajamas of, of like this kind of a plane. Yeah. Uh, the, the storm was too rambunctious is oh, the best way to yeah. say that. So That's these insane. these planes actually had to turn around. Oh. They drop radio signs. And people say, what are they doing there? Radio sign is like a tube and it's full of like a, a transmitter. Yeah. And it's able to measure wind speed and, and temperature and humidity as it's falling through the storm. The one this morning, right before landfall, measured surface winds at around 185 miles per hour. Winds 1,000 feet up from the surface were 255 miles per hour. Oh. That's important because you look at Jamaica and how mountainous it is. Yeah. Most of the mountains are between two and 5,000 feet. Mm. So 250 mile per hour winds. Mm. It made landfall about two hours ago. It goes down in history now as the strongest Atlantic Basin hurricane on record. Wow. My goodness. It actually ties one about 90 years ago called the uh, the Keys um, uh, hurricane. But think about 90 years ago. We didn't quite have the instrumentation right. to measure the way we do. Right. So, uh, yeah, um, uh, minimum pressure at around 890 millibars. The nerds will know what I'm talking about. And those winds, uh, 175 to 185. Mm -hmm. Some of the video you see coming out, it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, I was, I was interviewing Robert Ray from Fox Weather last night, and I said, Robert, you've had a chance to go around the island. And anybody who's been to Jamaica knows that, yeah, the resorts are spectacular. The island of itself, there's not a lot of infrastructure. There yeah. never has been. Yeah. You know, Kingston has a million people. That's and it's, it's, at the, it's at a basically a natural harbor and port right on the side of two massive mountains. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what's going to happen when we start to factor in 20 to 30 inches of rain. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, I, you know, this is one of those times, and, and I think everyone, you know, it's like news people will say, this, this poor little island nation's not going to look the same when, this storm's pa when right. the storm's past. It's, it's true. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely true. And as a meteorologist, you get a little, you get a little, a little turn in your tummy. Mm -hmm, uh, sure. It just feels weird. And, and Jamaica's not the only thing that's in Melissa's path. Right? No. So what? Uh, right now, it, it's funny. I've been looking, not funny, but it's bizarre. When you look at uh, over the last uh, hour, as the eye wall came ashore, those videos we've been seeing, the perfectly concentric circle. Right now, it's about to go right in between Discovery Bay and Montego Bay on the north side of the island. Mm -hmm. The eye wall has dissipated. That friction with the uh, with land has really sort of knocked it down. Winds are still 165 miles per hour. It just doesn't look as, as like, wow, mm -hmm. when you see it on satellite. Then it emerges back into the Caribbean. That warm water should churn up the eye again, hits parts of uh, eastern Cuba another place where there's no infrastructure. Mm -hmm. From eastern Cuba, we talk about the Turks and Caicos. From the Turks and Caicos, we talk about the mid area of the entire Bahamas chain, mm -hmm. from the Bahamas chain onward to Bermuda. Mm -hmm. So this is a long-lived storm, no landfall for the United States. And so you, I, I think a lot of people would just kind of do the whew. Yeah. But as you say whew, you also have to look around and say, oh, my God, those poor people, yeah. the yeah. poor people who are getting this thing. Where does like Melissa? I, I know Katrina is one that really stood out for for so many people in the United. Mm. Where does Melissa like? Ha, is this like that? How much more bigger is this than like a storm like so Katrina? Katrina was massive in terms of size. Yeah. It was a very big storm, and what made Katrina famous were the levees failing yeah. in New Orleans. Like Pontchartrain basically flooded all of the city once the levees started to go. It was. Uh, this morning at around 4 a.m., Melissa became more powerful than Katrina. And it's not linear. 
You know, people always talk about like how uh, how uh, if you fall out of a boat going 30 miles an hour, it's nothing like when you fall out of a boat going 40. It's not 10 miles faster. It's the kinetic energy yeah. of you and the wind and hitting the waves. Same thing is true. Every time we drop a millibar of pressure, people don't go, oh, it just went down a bit. It's all exponential. Mm. You know, so in terms of like bomb size, this is, this is a much, 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 much bigger quote unquote bomb than Katrina could ever imagine to be. And is this kind of becoming more typical for for hurricanes or you know, like how how does one how does a hurricane even maybe this is a dumb question yeah. how does it be, get to this record setting level of intensity uh, it has to spend an awful lot of time in perfect atmospheric conditions one of which is spending time over some very very warm ocean water we need to uh, eliminate the upper level flow of the subtropical jet stream we need to eliminate any interaction of any storms that are pouring out of the United States you know these storms that come down across us and we go wow that's cold and they get to Texas and they go wow that's cold and then it washes its way across the Gulf any storm like that is going to steer most of these storms away and rip the tops off. You rip the top off a hurricane, the hurricane goes away. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a lot of perfect atmospheric conditions that need to be matched. This is our third Cat 5 so far this year, so we're tying a record right there. I just think that it's easier to forget or not think about some of these storms when they're not hitting America. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big thing there. We have we have to kind of broaden our horizons whenever we talk about hurricanes. It's not just about, you know, the the, the coastal version of the Gulf. Mm-hmm. It's not just about the East Coast from, you know, uh, uh, Florida all the way up to the Carolinas. These are, this is a, this is going to be a, a humanity disaster of epic proportions. Yeah. You ever covered a, a hurricane yourself in, in your year? You know? I, I was in uh, Dennis years ago. It was... It's so hard to explain. I said to you guys off the air, when the rain hits your hand, it's not like, wow, it's raining hard. You say, that hurts. hurts it yeah. physically hurts. The rain yeah. and the wind, you know, the kinetic energy of the wind. It's absolutely incredible when you think about what, you know, people will say, well, this is a hurricane-proof house. Me? I go, yeah, I mean, they may have told you that. Right. So it's reinforced concrete, but all it takes is a little chink. It's yeah. like you you put on the best knight's armor that was ever made. Yeah, It doesn't make you impenetrable. Nope. Right. And that's the same with these houses. The kinetic energy of wind and water, just a little tiny thing that didn't quite get sealed properly, and suddenly the hurricane-proof area isn't. Yeah, It's a scary... This type of storm on this type of scale is catastrophic in so many ways. And I think what happens is the storms hit, and in, in the news cycle, we're like, wow, we got to cover it, and we're doing this, and look at this, and look at this, and in two weeks, it'll sort of drop off. It's like what yeah. happened with the Carolinas, with all that, yeah. the, the flooding. And there are places in the Carolinas that still don't have fresh water, don't have a fresh water supply. Mm-hmm. Well, think about not being able to go to the tap and get yourself a glass of water, mm. or have ice cubes, or make soup. Yeah. Like these are like really basic things. Yeah. It, it, it's going to be really awful. Mm-hmm. Once the light of day tomorrow for uh, for Jamaica and beyond. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could you? I mean, could you touch a little bit more on that? Like, what does the what does the rebuilding process and after like the immediate aftermath in these areas? The hardest part like? is when you talk about storm surge or flooding. It displaces the landscape, right? So if you have a shed. And let's say a strong wind comes next Saturday and you have a garden shed and your lawnmower's in there and a few things. It's one of those metal sheds. Mm-hmm. And the wind hits it and it bends and it's gone. You're like, ah, I'll go to insert big box name here mm-hmm. and I'll buy a new shed. It's going to cost you a few hundred dollars. It's a pain in the butt. Mm-hmm. When flooding and displacement of landscape happens, your house and your front yard and your neighbor's yard and where the road was and where the sewer was and where everything was isn't not just available to see. It's not there, nor will it be there until it's rebuilt. So how do you move thousands and thousands of cubic yards of earth back to whence it came? Yeah. Think about when, when, you, when you see somebody building a big apartment building. There's one going up in downtown Chanhassen right now. It seems like they've been digging the pit. For six months. Right. And this is the biggest, baddest tools in, in the richest uh, country in the world. And it's six months to dig this big pit to build this apartment building. It just doesn't happen quickly. Yeah, um, And it's really, really expensive. And this is an island nation where most of the tools that you would use, the, the builders, the graders, the plows, the cranes, they're going to be a part of the disaster. Right. 
So it's almost impossible to make them a part of the disaster recovery. It's it's a it's an unending cycle, and it's you know you th- start to think how can we get stuff down there? Well, it needed to be on a ship yesterday, yeah. And those ships needed to already be moving. Helicopters, sure, but where are we moving it in from? Yeah, right. You know, this is on the other side of Cuba. Yeah, where, where do these people go? Like we talked about like know. New Orleans. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of shanty towns in in Jamaica. You know, Kingston's a million. There's about three and a half million people who live uh, on the island itself. Uh, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know where food and water comes from. Right. And I'm not being alarmist. I really don't know. Right. Yeah. Because um, like even in New Orleans, like people went to Texas. People were able to go to other places in the United States. Like staying at the stadium. You know, right. Like yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's like you, if you're in Jamaica, like where you where, where you, you go? go? Like think about a big tornado that comes through. Uh, just say it goes through a, a a town or a city in Minnesota. Probably an hour drive from that town or city for you are major big box retailers where you can get anything you want, including yeah. food. Yeah. You know, once you have something like this on a small island nation, middle of the ocean, other side of Cuba from the United States, you're not driving to, you know, the grocery store. No. Because yeah. yeah. the grocery store might not even be there. Right. Right. That's the hard part. And so it's, it's I think it's trying to figure out how to get... How to get the help down there mm-hmm. yeah, and, and get it effectively. There's always people who are going to rip you off. Mm-hmm. You know, online you're going to donate 100 bucks and it goes into the, yeah. you know, into the netherworld, never yeah. to be seen again. Some rich dude's pocket. Right. I, and I don't, know how we, I don't know how we do it. I don't know how we help. Yeah, right. Um, but it's going to be a long process. I'm yeah, it's that. really tough. Yeah. It's really hard to watch. Um, bringing awareness to uh, to this to this disaster, Hurricane Melissa. Uh, we appreciate you, Ian, and um, and uh, and yeah. Hopefully, next time we, we get in here, it's more uh, more optimistic and, and upbeat, and our, our thoughts go out to all the yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I brought the room down. I totally yeah. get it. Yeah. But I think but this is real. an if this yeah, is yeah. a real thing. It's it's yeah. not. I know what's happening. You know, no, way yeah. far away from it. Right. But this is real. Yeah. And 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 there's going to be fatalities yeah. yeah and and a shift in the landscape there that will be visible in terms of the landscape scars for 10 20 30 40 years from now we still have tornado scars here through third theodore worth park yeah. i've flown a helicopter over the scar it's still there where all the trees went down yeah. i can't imagine what it's what it's going to be like yeah yeah um hopefully maybe maybe tomorrow or something we can find, figure out a way to a, a good place where people can for donate sure. or help or out, help out some, yeah. some some of the our yeah. fellow awesome. our fellow men and women down there. So yeah. okay. thanks for having me on. I of course <laughs> not a fun topic. No, no but you know, life all, life isn't important. always fun. It's no, important. you know what? I always I always end whenever I uh, talk to big groups and crowds and and do keynotes for charity. I always say the same thing. Stay black. What <laughs> that? Yeah. Well, there, there's that. I always say the same thing. What will you do for somebody else today? Yeah, it's how I've lived my life. And yeah. you know, there's a there's a movie out that won uh, the short animated Oscar last year. It's called the, I'll get it wrong. The boy, the the fox, the horse, and the mole. Mm-hmm. And the horse asks the boy toward the end of the movie. He says, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" Mm-hmm. And the boy thinks about it, and he says, "Kind." Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, if we can find a way to be more kind, I think it's a better world. Maybe we start with trying to help, you know, hurricane refugees and move from there. I don't even know. Absolutely.